Well, March 20th was declared meet out day. The governor, Governor Polis, uh, decided it would be a good idea to say put meat down for a day. What did that cause? It caused a uh, meat in day. In Colorado agriculture, uh, how do you connect with it? You go to it. And that's where we are today in Lamar, Colorado. Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, along with our friends. Rick Robbins here from Colorado Mills. Hey. And Jonah, good to see you as well. Yeah. Jonah. Jonah. Yeah. Good Jonah. To see you, <laughs> Um, Rick, this article, first of all, what's this newspaper publication? Plainsman Herald is the Baca County newspaper. Uh, and actually somebody came back, wanted to come back to the area from where they were originally from. And the newspaper was, had been defunct and, and quiet and he fired it back up and he's actually really got a good newspaper that they put out and has really good content about the local, what it feels like, what this area, um, you know, what's important to them. And uh, he did, a, I think, an excellent job on looking at, at the fallout and repercussions of what's happening from, from the governor's proclamation. Um, because not only did it affect what's in Colorado, surrounding states saw that and immediately jumped in and say, hey, beef is welcome in in Texas, in Oklahoma, in Wyoming, you know, in Nebraska. And so they had meat in days, March 20th, all around Colorado. So what's happening is, you know, Colorado has such a infrastructure of beef today that we didn't think, or I sure didn't think that it would have been, you know, fractured or be able to be fragile. But even talking to the, you know, the Western Stock Show, um, is they are now possibly being courted by other states because now there's people that are beef, major stock, seed stock producing uh, families and ranches that are saying, no, if Colorado is so negative about beef, we're not going to go there. We're not going to show our animals there. We'll go somewhere else. Well, who goes where they're not wanted? That's yeah. right. I mean, truly. Right. Um so that's what lands us here today in mm -hmm. Lamar, Colorado, at Colorado Mills Sunflower Products. And uh, getting to catch up with you guys is uh, not only what we wanted to do, but had to do. And I think that there are so many people right now that are connecting with agriculture today as mm -hmm. we speak. And so to be here at Colorado Mills inside, and I, I just want you to, people to get an idea of what Colorado does definitely does for not only the community, but as far as jobs, as far as farmers, and how it ties into ranchers as well. Can you give an over, uh, overview of Colorado Mills, please? Well, you know, we're, we've been here since 1999. Uh, we now, we started with about 12 employees. We're now up to 50 employees um, in, in a community of 7,000 people here in the town of Lamar. But that also reaches farther out into you know, we have over 120 uh, farmers that we contract sunflower seeds from, majority of those being in Colorado. Uh, the ranchers that we, that we list are multi-state ranchers from central New Mexico to the Wyoming border. We're approximately 600 ranches. And providing them with feed, and the way we do that is buying those seeds from the farmer, sunflower seeds, bringing them in, using pressure to extract the oil, out um, and then sending it to our refinery so it can be made into to food grade cooking oil um, and other uses but then also for every pound of oil we produce we produce two pounds of the sunflower meal that's that's left from the shell the meat that's high protein still has some residual fat in it is it extremely digestible all fiber no starch product for livestock do you have some of that in front of you? And we do. And, and you know, what we have is, uh, you know, you see a, a, our, an MB-26. It's a large range cube. Um, the reason it's that size, it's about seven-eighths in diameter, about two, two and a half inches long, so that the ranchers can take this out on the grass so these cows aren't in confinement and they're fed out on the grass and it's large enough that a cow can pick it up out of the grass. That's great. That's why it's that size. Well, and Rick, you talked about you actually have a direct impact on over 700 Colorado families because 600 ranches that are using your feed and over 120 
ranch farms that are growing for mm -hmm. your operations. So that's right. right there. But I gotta believe you touch thousands of people with the products that are oh, the offshoots. Yeah, and, and what we didn't even talk about was that refined uh, sunflower oil ends up in many, many of the culinary restaurants in the Front Range. Oh. And so does some of the meat that's produced by these ranchers ends up in those restaurants. And so they are proud to have Colorado product in their in their restaurants. And we do that by what we call bringing everyone together, connecting all those dots. We've talked Absolutely. about that for years on on showing them. And, and, and what's nice is we've the culinary group on the front range, well, throughout Colorado has focused and focused and focused on local. Make it local. You know, Brian, you know that. That that was that was your mantra when you and I first met, you know, in in being local. And some of the things that are happening right now uh have you know put that at risk. And we have to be very mindful of the decisions that we make that we continue to know where our food comes from and be comfortable with the quality well, that it is. Well yes. said. Um, so here we come full circle on this March 20th, which has turned into from a meet out day to a meet in day. One of the points that you've made and, and just so eloquently, I'd like for you to express how you can draw attention to one thing in a positive light to encourage and promote it, but you don't need to pit another one. Um, t talk about the point that you made about um, you can you can do a agriculture and promote farming and vegetables mm -hmm. but you don't need to do it at the expense of meat well i think i think what we've what we've seen and what we really need to be careful and guarded about is for something if if we're proud or we want to we want to promote or 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 further our ideas of let's say let's say i am a vegan and i want to to in, increase you know the the amount of vegetables and things that it's i vegetable eat. Vegetable in day. Other people, yeah, have a f farmers market day or a vegetable, you know, your favorite vegetable day or whatever. Don't have a meat out day, you know. If you really want somebody, you know, uh, if if somebody wants to convince me to be a vegan, then prepare me something that is so good absolutely that uh, i don't think i want that hamburger day i think i want yeah. this in a positive light in a positive light yeah and which is interesting as we go through and and the modern eater show that's what we do we connect um urban with suburban and rural communities to show you agriculture and i'll tell you what the farmers and the ranches ranchers are so intertwined they work together they have to and there's so much crossover that supporting agriculture as a whole is what needs to be done um i love being down here to see the people we're staying at the max hotel tonight mm -hmm. um everybody's just so friendly and welcoming but this is the salt of the earth this is people working very very hard uh, in a very uh unthankful <laughs> un <laughs> i mean agriculture there's not enough thanks that goes around no in my estimation well and, and it, there is that you you want to grow your feed thank you where you're where you're raising your livestock yeah. and that's just so important and that's that's the sad thing that i think and what i i'm so happy about being part of the modern eater and, and it, we are really promoting inclusiveness by saying hey we all should be supporting each other don't exclude farms and ranches from this. work together the, it's, that's this just is bottom we, line. we are all community and pulling our community together with with this day which gets me to a great tagline that colorado mills uses um know your farmer talk about yeah. know your farmer and then i want to see this newsletter that you have and share sure. it with other folks to sign up we'll have john to talk about the newsletter as yeah it goes along. well the things that that uh you know we're agriculture is so fragile it's 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 one of the only professions one of the few professions other than being a professional gambler where you can do absolutely everything right and lose. Mm. You can you can make every correct decision and no rain comes or a hailstorm mm. comes or a whatever and you can see it disappear in an instant. Boy. And there's they have to understand that you know 
farmers don't need additional stress mm -hmm. <laughs> than what they already yeah. have. You know, of oh gosh, I have to go fight this bill in in, it reminds in the state me house. Of a, a mentor taught me: you, you don't have to help me, just don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You don't have to help <laughs> me, just don't hurt me. Yeah, and 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 that's just the point that you were making yeah. there is that um, it, it's hard enough as it is. We yeah. don't need to have that act, yeah. added layer, unnecessary yeah. layer of yeah. difficulty. We have some really good rains here this last week, but. I want you to look as you head from here to Eads. Okay. How gray. Gray the pasture lands are. Yeah, barren. I mean, virtually looked like I can't imagine this is ever going to green up. Mm -hmm. It's got to be dead. Mm -hmm. And we don't know that it's dead, but it, this part of the country will do that. It'll look like that. But Mother Nature always seems to find a way. But right now, it's just wow. Yeah, you know. and you are the farmer's almanac around here. I mean, <laughs> truly, you, you know what year to year has been and, and, and what yeah. they're like. And sometimes you can even just by looking around, you've seen the land so much, you can forecast what the year ahead will be like. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hoping it'll be a great year for you guys, a banner year for well, you guys. Well, you know, uh, agriculture, and I don't care if it's farmer or rancher, they are the true optimists of the world because if you weren't, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Rick, and I, I don't think you all at Colorado Mills get enough credit for how, what sustainable agriculture that you do for the planet. Because quite honestly, I don't, we don't talk about this as much as we really should, yeah. Rick. But you guys are, are in an industry that the sunflowers are no-till or low-till, which mm -hmm. is so beneficial for our soils as opposed to some of the more highly tilled up and where they're losing soil off right. you know off of the face of the earth what you guys do and that's something i mean that you guys are a little bit of an unsung hero in the fact that you don't really promote that but it's something that you're doing well yeah. and it's something we're getting ready to promote more the industry uh quinn i, I give quinn popcorn uh my mind just went blank on on her name that started quinn popcorn but she's really large in regenerative ag and so she's got some other companies that are really interested in regenerative mm -hmm. ag. Well, we start looking at doing f at our farmers and say, okay, where are we in this? In this, and there's five principles of of soil improvement, and most of our farmers are already doing f at least three, or f and a lot of them doing four, and some are doing all five already. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they've always not knew regenerative ag that's the new coin word to it but they had to out of necessity you know we've helped them with as you say no till low till retaining as much of of that moisture that comes from the sky as possible because there is no other source for a lot of these farmers and by doing that we are building carbon in our soil and that's one of the things they talk about is carbon capture is as important or more important than somebody who's not doing something to reduce mm -hmm. the doing things to reduce their carbon footprint is that what the farmers do are to increase taking the carbon out of our world and storing it in the ground yep. mm. and so okay so now we're looking at things like that that uh, the farmers now the hero they used to always say oh you know the farmers are you know just burning you destroying know, the air, yeah. Burning our world. Well, if you've yeah. ever been out here, you, you, you don't smell cleaner air than you do than when you're out here. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, freshness. The sky is just about as blue here as it is on top of the mountains out here because there isn't pollution out here. There isn't this. We're not destroying our planet. You know, our farmers, this is their livelihood. They have to keep this land in good shape. They have to, or they won't survive. So, you know, those are the things that, you know, and the ranchers are the same way. You know, they're not, they're not overgrazing. They don't get rain, so they can't put cattle out there anymore. You know, they have to send them off to, you know, some of them are sending their cattle to Texas or, or Missouri or wherever. They're still, they're, you know, owned, and eventually they get to come back mm. as soon as we get some water around here. So so happy to bring you this conversation here today and connecting on this March 20th with agriculture. Um, this this is how we learn, and we're, we're happy you're able to 
get a glimpse of of these kind of conversations because they're few and far between. I think there need to be more. Uh, the Lamar and the region have been great supporters. Anytime we make content and we're speaking to you guys directly, uh, thank you truly for sharing all the content that we create. It means the world to us. So um, just just being able to do this service for uh, all of you guys in this region is uh, we're very thankful for that. We're going to break away real quick. We're going to come back. Rick and John are going to talk to us about this newsletter of how you can stay connected with Colorado Mills Sunflower Products it's and great. all of their great products, which is a, a, truly an array from uh, culinary sunflower oil to feed for for your uh, ranches to... Um, Don't forget the body products. That's exactly where I was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the best around in Sunnies. So we'll take a break. We'll come right back and then look forward in segments to come the day hasn't unfolded here for us yet but we will be connecting more and you'll see some of the faces of agriculture which i think is truly important know your farmer okay back in a flash the modern eater show continues hi i'm amber with strohauer farms and i'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in colorado goodness elevated thanks for watching the modern eater show Modern Eater, we love you guys. This is Amber with Northern Colorado Potatoes, reminding everyone that potatoes grown here are truly rooted in love and rooted in a long history of being grown in this area. Early 1900s reports show that this was either the largest or one of the largest potato producing areas in the nation. Other states have had some amazing branding, but don't forget we have all your favorite varieties and more you love to cook and eat, including russet. Support local potatoes, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> hey, Zach Ryder here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with the Annex by Ardent Mills and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. Hey, thanks, and welcome back to the Modern Eater Show on this March 20th. Here we are, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products in, in the office of Rick Robbins, checking out this feed on this uh, meet-in day. Can't wait to see what the day brings. There's going to be a lot of great people that we're going to meet, but connecting with agriculture and the faces of agriculture is what we're doing here today. Uh, Rick Robbins, Jonna, you have a great, a couple of newsletters that are coming out. We're going to have to hand Jonna a stick mic, Jay. Oh, you got one? Great. Fantastic. Magic. 
magic. Uh, cool. Rick, take the lead. What are we going to look at here and then introduce uh, this young lady here? Yeah. Uh, Jonna is our social media uh, person for Colorado Mills. Uh, she's been with us three years. Uh, started just as an over-the-counter person, and this is what she, this is her thing. Yeah. You know, it's exciting because if this was my responsibility, uh -huh. it would have... <laughs> flopped it would have yeah it had been worse than a flop it, it, it would have ditched in the ocean yes uh, uh what one one point is chefs as you're watching this right now you know you love colorado milk sunflower oil we're all addicted to it take a picture of yourself with the bottle to get, make sure johnny yeah. has some good content so chefs definitely take pictures of yourself with colorado milk sunflower oil send it over to johnny johnny do you have an email yeah, uh, Jonna, J-O-N-N-A, at comillscom Do it. Jonna, how can they, can they follow you on Instagram? Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram at CM Sunflowers, and on Facebook, it's Colorado Mills Sunflower Products. Yes. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead, Rick. Okay. Well, when we decided to do a newsletter, it's going to be a quarterly newsletter, and, and but there will probably be some earlier bulletins that come out. Um but it's a three-stage newsletter, meaning the culinary group, uh, when when they sign up, they'll get the culinary newsletter that starts out with, uh, talking about the oil. and But it'll ha also have the ranch part down in it and the farmer part down in it. And so, and then the, if the ranchers, when they sign up, when they pull up their newsletter, the first thing they're going to see is all the ranch information. Oh, cool. And so it's going to be in different orders, but the information will all be there. And it's extremely important for us that everybody gets to see all the parts because yeah. as, as, as we say, you know, know your farmer, know your food. The other one is where it all comes together mm. and understanding how it comes together and why it's so important. You know, people that use our oil, there's a lot of people in our oil that are in the vegetable world or in the just in the cooking world or the vegan world. And they have to understand that for them to enjoy this wonderful product, we also have to support beef production because the other two thirds of what we're producing mm -hmm. is is a product that goes into into uh, animal production and um also it's starting to go into pet food production as well Whoa. it's gonna what are we looking at here jonna so this is our culinary newsletter uh right up top uh we have our awesome mill there and then uh we have an option you can order online i think colorado mills is in a really unique position to where you know we can be the leaders in regenerative agriculture on the oil side because we are the place where we can connect ranchers and farmers to the users who are using their end product so i think that's really unique so um we just want to make what we're doing more transparent to everyone so ordering online i have a lot of people friends other than coming and trying to steal it from us at Studio Kitchen, stop doing that. Order you can order online now. Yeah, that's fantastic. Ship right mm -hmm. to them. Ship right to them. What size bottles are you sending? So we can do single packs, three packs, a six pack, a twelve, and now we have uh, boxes we can ship the bibs, the two and a half uh, gallons, the ten liters. And we also can ship the jibs, the 35-pound, five gallons. Wow. wow. So not just for food service anymore. Uh, your favorite restaurants. Uh, a lot oh, of these I've guys. switched, just so you know, in my house. Oh, well, I'm, yeah, I'm It is to the it. only oil that I use I pretty much all the time now. I finish with a little olive oil maybe on here and there. But quite honestly, your Colorado Mills oil, you, it's, it's every day. It's in my eggs. It's, I use it as to fry so my chicken. So give a little scroll. Do I see I a recipe yeah. or something here? Yeah. What, 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 what we do is uh, we went ahead and, and first of all, you'll see here an article. This was done by Zach Kreider, our, our, our oil uh, savant. Uh, and he does our um, oil sales to the culinary world. Then also here's a recipe of the month. And what's really cool about that, you can click and go to the full recipe and this one and is is given to us by um chef emma 
Nemechek. Nice. This is her recipe for this product. You're not going to find Emma. one of the top chefs in Colorado yeah. giving you their recipe. One yeah, of their that's recipes. That's fantastic. And I how I. How I didn't know this exists is, uh, um, first of all, just uh, I'm nuts that I didn't know, but now I do know. How can other people know about this, and how can they get this newsletter sent directly to them? Yeah, so make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, also on our blog. It's comillsblog.com, and we're constantly updating our content on there. There's always tidbits, for, you know, for everyone in this multifaceted company. You know, we got stuff for ranchers, farmers, so cool, you guys. Uh, the recipes. We even have a section to where, um, so that you can get to know us better, we have a meet our team section. So we did all our upper management, and we're just slowly going to work our way through our whole company. Wow, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Uh, do that. So if you go to uh, Colorado Mills comillsblog.com comillsblog.com and you can sign up for the newsletter there yep right on the front page oh that's awesome and you have specific newsletters for sp specific um groups of people that you want to see right, right? Oh, yeah right. you'll be able to sign up for whichever newsletter we'll have those options uh, she's she's getting that as we speak to where you can click into that uh what's nice as you get to the end of that blog then you can look down here at some of the recent posts uh you know, oilseed pricing on the rise. What we also have here is an article for our culinary people understanding, you know, when they go and buy their oil here in the next few months, my, my gosh, what, what, what's going on? The price is going up. Why is it going up? And this article talks about not just what's happening in Colorado, but what's happening around the world in, in oil uh, globally as far as, you know, we have a drought in, in South America, so we have less oil coming through so soybean oil is going up and that drives the price of the other it's oils up but it's giving them a picture for six months down the road saying okay i might need to do something with my volume or projected volume for my company now instead of waiting until you know this this price increase shows up Okay, Rick, you read that one. I'll read the Snickerdoodle cookies. <laughs> and that's what we'll do. Okay, now we want to take a look around. You guys yeah. mind showing us around? Hey. Right, Rick and Donna, they're going to show us around. Yeah. We're at Colorado Mills on a beautiful day. It's March 20th in Lamar, Colorado. And uh, we're going to go take a, a, a look around. The I'm excited. Colorado to get Mills Sunflower Products. It's a Every cool time. place. Stick awesome. around. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, for by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey Four Pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey Four Pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pencos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. Now, let me tell you about Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. He's the man with the plan. When it comes to tap installations and tap maintenance, Jeff Rourke is the most trusted man in the business. 20-plus years, family-owned and operated, does great work, and you might be knocking the rust off of your bar or restaurant and getting things tuned back up. He's the guy to call. If you're pouring in efficient beer, Jay, what are you doing? You're pouring your money down the drain. 
uh, money. Don't do that. Uh, foam is money. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke, A Plus Beverage Solutions. Tell him what you need done. He'd be happy to come out and just take a look for you. Here's the phone number to give him a call, 720-272-3809. One more time, 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke in A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Okay. Hey, <coughs> welcome back. Colorado Mills Sunflower Products. This is one of the great items that we love. It's the oil right here. And Rick and John are going to show us around. Who can speak about this lovely line, Sunny's, real quick? I would love to. Uh, so Sunny's Naturals was started in 2018. Uh, we started with an insect spray, and from there, Rick was like, well, what's next? And uh, all of this kind of developed from that. We have cream and oil-based body moisturizers, really great facial and eye serums, uh, some all-natural options as well, our after shower salve and lip balm are all natural. We like to put together cute boxes too. Um, Tell me what this is. This is, is this a new product? Yes. So when COVID-19 decided to make her appearance last year, uh, we couldn't find any kind of cleaner. You know, there wasn't any Clorox wipes on the shelves, no bleach or anything. So the Sunny's ladies, Marilyn and Jody, they came up with a hand rub formula and a hard surface spray. The alcohol inclusion meets CDC and FDA guidelines. And then we add in, uh, in the hard surface spray, there's, I think, thieves and clove. But what's really unique about the liquid hand rub formula is that it also has aloe gel and sunflower oil. So it's keeping your hands nice and soft while still keeping them clean. That's cool. The whole yeah. line is fantastic, and I've loved seeing it grow throughout the years. And people can find more information on this online, too. Where do they go? Yeah, you can follow us on Facebook, uh, Sunny's Naturals, same as I, Instagram as well. Because it's it is uh, the, most of the Here, pour some in mine for your hands. Most, yeah, that's your it's that's done. just like your. Um, your hands nice are nice i like that it doesn't dry well, your hands out you got nice. a good feel to it yeah that feels really nice. not yeah, sticky at all yeah, well, there you go. Like, uh, uh okay we're smells getting great. set and ready to go we're okay. gonna do a walk around thanks for showing us this uh truly you guys look at these products right here and one thing that's really noted or notable is one business uh spawning another business and here's a great brand that um that you guys have done so well with I continued success on. That. Well, as she said, you know, we, we always talk about it and she said it, what's next. And <clears throat> I think our employees have gotten into that mode of innovation. There's innovation and there's just, there's nothing we can't do. We just have to figure it some, wow. if, if somebody can do it, we can do this it. This smells great. That's too. awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of these skin guys are doing products, these products. I've seen the befores and afters of, um, how much the healing properties and benefits have done for so many people. And uh, if I took that book back there, I could probably show you some <laughs> success stories right there. Yep. But that's for you to um, find out more information about that, if that's something you need. Let's take a look around. Okay. Okay, great. Here we are, Rick and Jonna. Now, this is where it gets cool. Now, <laughs> how many years have you said Colorado Mills has been around? Uh, started in 1999. Now, uh, these buildings, this looks a little... 1999 is how long this structure's been around, or what, what was this property? <laughs> no, this, st this structure was originally a grain loadout facility built in the 40s, the concrete part of it. Yeah. Um, this main square part building here was a warehouse. Everything, everything metal above this concrete you see right here is what Co uh, Colorado Mills put in uh, in 1999, uh, mainly starting out as feed manufacturing. And now, if you're in Lamar, Colorado, this is a landmark. You can see this baby from everywhere. You know, for some reason, everybody can except for truckers. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot. They cannot they find, find us for the life of you, huh? But yeah, we have a little hard time walking them in. Now, the first thing that you get right when you walk in the building is the smell. The smell of the press, right? Yeah. Um, it's the seeds. It kind of the shell of the seed is what I'm smelling. Yeah. What it does is it, it heats it up enough. It's not overheating anything. Most of the seed meal won't get over 200 degrees. Take a look. Well, and yeah. Rick, we're walking by some other products. You mix these. 
with it for the feed. Is that how that works? This is the vitamin trace mineral parts of our feed. So we formulate all of our feeds here. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over at Sam's number three, Glendale. You want a Bloody Mary? You want a cheeseburger? You want a breakfast burrito, Greek salad, bacon gyro meat, chicken souvlaki, barbecue ranch salad? We got you covered. Come down and see us. One more time. Try it again. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over here at Sam's number three, Glendale. Now get your ass to themoderneater.com. Thank you so much. Modern Eater, we love you guys. This is Amber with Northern Colorado Potatoes, reminding everyone that potatoes grown here are truly rooted in love and rooted in a long history of being grown in this area. Early 1900s reports show that this was either the largest or one of the largest potato producing areas in the nation. Other states have had some amazing branding, but don't forget we have all your favorite varieties and more you love to cook and eat, including russet. Support local potatoes, you won't be disappointed. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time and you're watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right, you guys, back to the show in just a second. I'm here in Colorado Springs with Chef Noah Siebenhaller, and we're here to tell you about bread, and specifically Aspen Baking. Aspen Baking Company has been baking the best bread in Colorado since 1994. Chef, I know you use Aspen Baking Company here. What do you use here? Why do you like it? So um, I use their sourdough, their French Parisian, their burger rolls, marble rye, and slider rolls. Um, I, I was introduced about three and a half years ago, and I haven't found a better bread in Colorado since. So we use it for exclusively for everything. I'm telling you what, you guys, don't take my word for it. Take Chef Noah's. They're making quality product. They don't put in the, 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 the fake colors. They don't put in the chemicals. They don't freeze it. They don't do that stuff. They just bake fresh bread. Aspenbaking.com is where you go to get that bread. And uh, now back to the show. And so these are the hand, what we call the hand ads, the vitamins, trace minerals that we need to put in those feeds to balance. Nice, nice. You're really helping what a lot What are we looking at here, Rick? Ranchers out. Okay, right in here as we just walked by, this mezzanine here is where we mix our feeds. We have a three ton weigh hopper up above, weighs the feed, drops it into this mixer. That's where they're going to add, if they need to add any molasses or oil, is added at that point, or a hand added to any of the vitamin trace minerals. Then once it's mixed for proper amount of time, then its air gates open and it drops into the surge hopper in the basement, it's elevated up into the bin. Wow. Very intimidating, this <laughs> equipment here. Um, There's a lot of horsepower going yeah, on and, here. And you're in production today. Yes, we are. Wow. Yes, we are. If you want to look down into here, you're going to see the oil coming out of the presses. Um, 
What little bit of meal is coming with it will be sorted out in a settling tank in the basement, brought back up and repressed. This is like a giant screw inside of a cage. And so as the screw comes this way, it gets tighter and tighter toward the end, and it's pushing out the oil out through this metal bar cage, and the meal comes out to the end, and then it's set up uh, and cooled before it's put into the feed side. Now, it's not that time of year for harvest and seed, so this has been stored for a while, what you're pressing right, right now. These seeds were harvested last fall, uh, usually in the, starting in October, November, clear into December. Um, so they, uh, they can, and then now the seeds that were coming in are the ones that are stored on the farm at the farmer's You ever end. run out? We get pretty close. About we, what time of year? Uh, September. September's the the matching point. We before actually, harvest. Before harvest. Sometimes we've actually, the new crop seed that came in, we had about three or four more days. <laughs> we <laughs> finished the old crop and we started new crop. So, Let's go look at where you can see some of this raw product in these. Okay. Morning. These are the dyes that make our feeds that you saw in the office. Um, this is that 7 8 dye we talked about. They have the small dye on today. When you look at this pelleting machine, if you can imagine, this is just a giant 250 horsepower Play-Doh machine. Yeah. Remember as a kid, when you take Play-Doh and you put yeah. it in, you put oh, yeah. it through and make yeah. it form. And that's what it does. That's what this and thing so does. And so this is the byproduct of what they're doing with the oil. Talk about that sustainability. Front. I mean, this is exactly. where it all comes full circle. Well, now, Rick, we, there is zero waste here. Yeah. That's what we haven't even talked about. Zero well, waste we facility. Find, we find that uh, methodology or mentality coming from uh, even folks like uh, a friend of ours, Jeff Schwartz, who owns Big Bees. It's an orchard. Yeah. How do you utilize the apple all the way from being the apple through the process of the vinegar to the cider to the hard cider to the apple juice? back around to how do you have it regenerative for the yeah. ground. Feed and compost. And, yep. and that's the full circle yeah. that even Colorado Mills likes to do. You know, a lot of people don't talk about all the breweries in Colorado, but a lot of the mash that comes off of those breweries goes back into feeding livestock. And, or it goes back into another food product, just uh, as Rich Schneider with Broccolitas takes the takes it off at uh, Tommy Knocker Brewery and makes the nacho borracho chip. So this is basically that intake facility that turns it into the sorting, the pressing, the sorting process into one to the oil. And then from here, the oil goes through another process, right? Right. Uh, let's go check that out. Okay. Jump in anytime you want to, Jonathan. Now, this is an interesting machine. Is it really hot in there? Ah, it's a little hot. You can come to this end and look at what's good. This one you get to see. The other one, it gets too hard. But this one, you literally get to see what it's putting out. This is the, our expander preps those seeds and this is what's called the first pressing. And you can actually see the lines that what we call the cage bar, and that oil was coming out through those lines. And so this product that started yeah. out 40% fat is now probably 18. So we've got a little over half of the oil out. And we're producing, uh, we're going through approximately four to five tons of sunflower feed, seeds an hour. We're gonna be producing about 10,000 gallons of sunflower oil in a 24 hour period. Wow, incredible. Now when you think about that, you're also producing about 70 tons of sun meal to use into feed products. Yep. And so all of that is turned in and 
it's it's a it's quite the dance that that our employees do because we have to sell that oil at a certain rate that we're not shutting our feed mill down because we can't fill up with oil because we fill up with oil then we shut down and now we don't have any feed product unbelievable lots so, of moving parts that's for sure yeah. okay let's go check out the refinery okay just so many moving parts to all of this rick it's amazing <laughs> we're gonna head straight that way So, if one of those machines breaks down, you can't just call your local Ace Hardware, can you? <laughs> well, sometimes. Our uh, main presses come from Germany. And uh, so, but they do have parts in Topeka, Kansas. So a lot of those parts we can get here within 24 hours. Um, we do run inventory of all our possibilities. What's this, Rick? It's where it gets dropped off, huh? Well, this is where the feed, yeah. Actually, what he's getting loaded right now is sun meal that's getting produced over the weekend that they're not using, and he's gonna take this over to our south flat and put it in storage for us. Gotcha. And then we'll bring it back uh, later on. But we actually need that buffer to where we can hold a few hundred ton of product because if we get a surge, once again, we yep. don't want to shut down. Mm -hmm. We got to keep it moving. How about those containers? Containers. I've never heard anybody call them a container. No? Yeah, no, our, our storage bins uh, for uh, our sunflowers, we put those up three years ago. Each one of those bins can hold 4 million pounds of sunflowers or approximately 158,000 bushels. So when you're looking at uh, trucks it's going to probably each one's going to hold about 100 to 125 semis wow sunflower seeds nice and at full production we will use the contents of one of those bins in about four weeks wow that is amazing that is amazing now rick just to let everyone know you have a conveyor belt don't you from where we just were standing to this facility or no uh, no, we were we are about to put in some uh, piping to where we can pump our oil over here and also pump our refined oil back to the tracks. Okay. When we put this facility in, there was a that was one of the other issues we had to get around on on our inspection was their philosophy was if we connect these two with a pipe, then that also turns into a food facility. Oh, okay. So, so you've had to work through <laughs> some stuff. We had to work through some stuff saying, okay, so now we have to truck it. But now, as long as we have these piping hoses through a, we call it a gutter, that we can disconnect and all that kind of thing, then we're fine. So it goes back to that's truly a closed closed production facility over there. Right. But, it, but it's not looked at that way. It wasn't in the beginning, and you right. guys have had to work with your inspectors to get yeah. things changed over. That's yeah. great. What are we walking into right now? This, well, this, this building was put up in uh, late 2008, early 2009. The equipment landed in here in July 2009 from Germany. This is our refinery. This is a three-stage filtering process where we take the crude oil from over there at the crushing facility, bring it over here, put it through those stages, and when it comes out the end, it's the product that can you find in your bottle or in your tote or in your semi-tanker or in your rail car. If you're Rich so. Snyder, you get a rail car. Oh. <laughs> Rich Snyder will be one of those guys someday. <laughs> That's right. Come on it in. an idea of some of the end users. Who uses the product? Uh, I mean, who would get a rail car? that just sending it out to somebody else? You know, it's interesting. Uh, we have, we're getting into not only culinary products anymore, uh, but we do have, you know, a lot of large chip companies. We, um, some of our oil ends up companies like Frito-Lay, Campbell's Soup, different 
Yeah, they're lucky like to that. get it too. That's for yeah. sure. And uh, and then some local products too. The popcorn company you were telling me about company. out of Boulder, yes. right? What type yep. of company called? They Quinn. do a great job. Yeah. Quinn popcorn. They have the oil along with it, and just the highest standard of oil products. Yeah. Would you consider this as far as manufacturing go? Small size, medium size, large size. Facility? This is small. Yeah. This is a small size. But what's unique about a small size is we're able to do some other oils. This this facility here can do uh, almost two times refining what we can produce presently over there. And so we do some toll refining for non-GMO corn oil uh -huh. that comes out of Iowa. We just did one for a um, uh, almond oil through our facility. Now we have to be careful when we do that. We have to make sure because allergens, you, you know, in most of it, but yeah. One thing about allergens is an allergen cannot live in a product that doesn't have any proteins. Okay, so fat doesn't have any proteins. And our last step in our process takes it through over, uh, an over 400 degree deodorization process under vacuum, which is what they call a kill step for anything that would be in there to bother anybody. And then we do a flush out, do a clean out, so we do, we isolate it so before we come back with another product. Mm -hmm. So we can come back with, you know, our sunflower. Because there is a concern, you know, because there, people are, are sensitive to dirt and certain things. All right, in Lamar, Colorado, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to take a quick loop inside the facility. And then we're going to get out of your hair. We're all going to go over and meet with some folks. Yeah. On this uh, meet-in day, March 20th. Okay, back in a flash, the Modern Eater Show continues. Hey you guys, Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater. And uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators, you know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever, and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the Procard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120, there's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow! Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. making education cool again, Jay. You know how? Culinary Quick Start Program. We are in love. They're using Studio Kitchen Colorado Monday through Thursday. If you have any desire to get into culinary or you're just sharpening your skills, I'm telling you, these guys, Chef Blake, Chef Marcus, they're instructing a course, and I've been there the past couple of nights, and this course is cool. It's informative, it's innovative, and it has the modern eater touch on it. You can tune into this as well, but you have to sign up for the course. If you go to themoderneater.com, you'll see it on the top navigation bar. It's a drop down. Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. All of the stuff that we're doing and sign up information is right there for you. It's a gimme. It's free to you. It's like the cooking classes you pay for. Don't pay for them anymore. You just sign up and what is the best part of this thing? We got jobs for you. 
the troops are rallying, the community's getting together, and there's a baseline. So restaurants, if you want to get involved, you're a restaurant tour, you can get involved because we need you and you to support this program with your skills. So what does that entail? This entails getting together and having a job seminar for these students. It's gonna be a baseline. You need a baseline of knowledge for your students where when they come in, you know they're gonna be able to handle a line in a kitchen. So get involved. If you have any interest in signing up and being a student for this class, you can't get in on this three weeks, but the following three weeks you can get in on. Again, sign up, themoderneater.com. You'll see Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. But we want you to join the revolution of making education cool again. Okay, back to Elevation Food Service reps. I go home. I strip down to my skivvies. All right, here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hey, everybody. Steve Gould from Golden Moon Distillery and Golden Moon Speakeasy. When I get my cocktails to go from Golden Moon Speakeasy, I go home, I kick back, and I watch The Modern Eater. Skivvies. Hey, I'm a Marine. It's Skivvies, man. Greg and Brian with Rick and Jonna inside of Colorado Mills. This is a refinery area, and uh, first of all, talk about where we are. This building is just adjacent to our crushing facility, about 100 yards away. Uh, this building was built in 2009. Production in this facility started in 2010. This is where the oil comes to and goes through our filtering process. So that when it's done, it's of a culinary quality that goes into either a bottle, it can go into a, a jib, or it can go into the like the barrels barrel. you see here. Got a lot of barrels. Got a lot of barrels. Hey, John, could you stand behind, the, get in front of this line, please? Okay, thank you. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of rules that you got to follow. <laughs> Uh, the red lines, and, yeah. and generally these are the guys when they're in here working, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, you got to do that too. Oh, my strings, yeah, that's a no-no. And my sunglasses. <laughs> no, you're good. It's you're true. good. Um, no, this is this is cool process. Do, can we do a loop? Sure. All right, let's sure. do a loop. We're going to start over here in the uh, degumming process. These are all just waiting to be filled. Is that right? These are all empty. Yep. As you look here, what we have is we have a centrifuge where the oil has been brought in uh, through the lab that's been decided what, how many FFA or impurities it has in it, and it's going to be spinning those off here. Uh, if you don't see anything come out of that glass, it'll probably come out in a big clump here in a little bit. Uh, it's more like a peanut butter consistency. Um, but it's, uh, but this is something that uh, is on schedule for replacement here this next year. We're gonna put a new higher volume. There's some just went through the light um, centrifuge. And even though this one's still running, uh, if, you, if I order a new centrifuge today, it's 26 weeks before it gets here. Woo! Half so a year, half a year. You can't, yeah, I said, that's what I said. Why don't you just say half a year? Look at all of <laughs> and, I, and We'll see in a yep. minute here, but we'll go into a lab. What's There's, that? Oh, there's a lot of science that's involved to what's oh, going absolutely. on here, and we'll show the lab in just a minute. But all coming back around, when you see all of this, this is for consistency. This right. is for excellence. This is what are you looking for for your end product to do, and that ties into all these machines, right? right? What's the end product? And yeah, how good and, and and what level of quality is that end product? This is taking the first gums off, which is the phos phosphatides, uh, some of the impurities, the FFAs. They're going into a, a, a tote where that will go into a tank and when, when we get enough of that, we sell that, a semi-load of that product, they acidulate it, take the moisture out, and that goes back into livestock feeds. The next process is right behind us is the bleaching. Does all the oil go through this or just yes. the sampling? No, all, all of it goes through this. Oh, wow. Do you measure it in gallons per minute? How do you measure yeah, it? No, we're pounds per hour. And pounds per hour. Yeah, we're usually running about 5,000 pounds an hour, which is a little less than uh, 7,600 would be 1,000 gallons. Yep. So okay. you're about, you know, 750 gallons an hour. An hour, we're okay. Run through that. This is what we call bleaching. And, it, and it, first of all, it sounds scary, bleaching, but... Actually, what we're using is we're using a natural earth clay. Comes in and it's usually uh, acid activated with citric acid, phosphoric acid, 
but it's really white. And when it comes in, uh, we run the, put it in the oil, and when it comes out, you can see it's pulled some impurities out of that oil. Some of the Whoa. natural metals, copper, zinc, magnesium that's in plants, it's pulled that out of the oil. It's almost like a uh, RO system for water where you take all the minerals out. What we're doing to the oil here, we're taking it out. And so we're getting that to be, uh, and this will actually go back out and can be used as a fertilizer, can also be used in a feed ration. Um, so this is also not that, thrown That's away. what this machine does. I'm yeah. bleaching. Really interesting. It's all bleaching. Well, um, I, I wanted to smell it, but I, I used your great hand sanitizer. I, all yeah. I can smell is that great hand sanitizer. So as we run around the back here. Yeah, let's do that. We Take can a look. show a couple of spots. See if our light works. Do you have a flashlight? Yes, hold on. All right, so I believe what he's going to do is turn the light on in there and we'll be able to see as the uh, bleaching process takes place, maybe how it looks is what I'm guessing. I never understood the value of a camouflage flashlight. <laughs> I can't find them when they're yellow. Okay. Now you see that cloudiness there. That is the oil where the the uh, clay has been introduced. So it's going into two vacuum chambers in here, agitating under uh, about 200 degrees. And what it does is that the clay particles open up and the remaining phosphatides and metals and stuff are, are, are taken off. Well, it's headed to this round container that has panels in it that's now it's filtering off that clay after it's done that. And then this is what the oil looks like after it comes off. Wow. Wow. What's the hottest temperature, Rick, that it will get throughout your process? Yes. Okay. Through this process, most of it's about 200 degrees through through the degumming and the bleaching process. And that's this tank right and here. And then it gets to this tank. Woo! This tank is almost under total vacuum. We raise that temperature up to over 400 degrees. And then we introduce sparge steam, and sparge steam is low pressure steam, which is only 330 degrees. Well, when you introduce temperature of steam that's lower than the temperature of the oil, super expands, vaporizes the remaining free fatty acids, and since it's under vacuum, those are pulled off, and those are stored in that tote right behind you there. Wow. And that is a product we use in some of our feed products. Unbelievable. What's really cool about that, and chefs, if you're listening, what you just said, this is a high. You can run this oil at high temperature oh, right absolutely. here. It's great for cooking. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that burn rate like on an olive oil or something else. Have you ever almost died in your? Uh, oil? Yeah. <laughs> well, but and talk about absorption rate. That's one thing that we forgot to mention. Your guys' oil, if you're a chef, 20 percent less absorption okay. into the foods. Right. Absolutely. I got to put this light back. So that tanker right there, muy hot, muy caliente. Isn't it interesting, Greg? It's almost like a distillation yeah. of the oil in a Which sense. Which is fantastic. Really? And that's why I want to ask, and we'll walk over here where it's a little less noisy. We can actually step in the control room if you'd yeah, like Yeah, let's do that. So we're heading into the control room right here in the automation, and the automation has really come with, within the last decade or two, Rick, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things, as again, taking a look through Colorado Mills, Colorado Mills Sunflower product, right here in the automation portion of it, one of the things, and throughout the years... Hey. Oh, uh, let me enter. This is Chris Hart, one hey, of the Chris. operators. Uh, good to see hey, you, Chris. Um, throughout the years, th it, this is truly a recipe, right? H how do right. you figure out the beginning of just the recipe that you knew you wanted as that product to be? Before automation, the, the product has had to evolve throughout the years. Well, what we originally started is, is because we didn't know, because we hadn't ever been in the refined oil business before. So we go to a lot of oil customers, we find out, what their final specifications are. 
then when we talked to the engineers, this is, I said, came from Germany. They looked at it and said, okay, these are the things that need to do. This layout right here uh, was done by OMI uh, back in 2008, 2009 when they were doing this. This is the only one in the world. They've done, s there's individual units of this, but this is the only place where all three of them are in one place. Yeah. Which is the good and bad news you have. Yeah. The one, but the bad news is. Sometimes you don't want to be the first part. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that part. Okay, 26 well, weeks. Well, and we, that's yeah. September. And so everything that we have in this plant, we look at, and we look, talked a little bit about it earlier. We find out how long does it take to get. If it takes longer than 72 hours to get, we have a spare on the shelf. Yeah. Boy, that's Makes a smart thing sense. to do. And well, let's get into this gentleman's job, and then we'll take a look at the science factor of this. But uh, truly, consistency is what automation, technology, mm -hmm. and science has to do with. But let's bring it into that delicious oil you know so well. Well, what's cool about this this is it is uh, all done by computer. Uh, they can make their adjustments uh, to the oil. Uh, if we go to neutralization, uh, the degumming part, they can they can decide how much either citric acid or phosphoric acid or caustic they're going to add to this to neutralize this oil so they can spin off the phosphatides. Wow. So green mean good, red mean bad? Somewhat. What's yellow mean? <laughs> uh, be careful. Be careful? Yeah. Gotcha. What, so, like uh, what, what's something where it's like red alert, red alert at the factory. We've well, we got to address okay. this. Okay, here, here we have a high alarm, 1201. Okay, so that tank that that oil is coming in is is going red right now. They know the level that it's it's doing okay, so they've either got to clean it or adjust it or whatever. <laughs> but it'll come up here and it'll go on their um, their listing of of alarms. But what'll happen is like right now you have alarm, but you don't have a buzzer anywhere. Um, they can be out anywhere on the floor. They don't have to be here when that happens and they'll get the buzzer will go off they can come in and check it it's usually got a level to where they say hey you need to check on this or up sorry i stopped so or if you don't hurry up we're shutting the lights off on this place mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and it'll it'll actually go through those you don't just get a text message no. Rick, come back to work, Rick. You know, <laughs> the, the 2 a.m. phone calls have almost dropped to nothing. <laughs> this program, we bought it from Germany, but it was written in German. Oh, fun. Which, yeah, well, fun, yes. The, the, time, the time, the eight hours off is, is a sure. little tough to get tech, tech people going. Because in Germany, when they get off work, they like to drink. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not answering calls, right? And, and, and if you <laughs> might get one that's been into it an hour too long. That's right. And, but fortunately for us, the two people that actually wrote this version of Siemens, uh -huh. not the program, but this version of software, are the Piglers, and they live in Firestone, Colorado. Oh, I know. That, that coincidence uh, yeah, is they were right. in Germany when they wrote it. They, yeah. they met each other. They got married. They moved to the U.S., and luckily our electrician at the time, hey, what about these people? And they went in and said, oh, yeah, wow. sure. Cool. cool Show us now. the lab. We'll finish it sure. up. Sure. It's fantastic. This is always fun. And, again, consistency is key and then also what the product should be. So without getting too science-y, kind of just describe this room and what, what we're looking for. You know, <coughs> at every stage, from the time the crude oil comes in to the time refined oil goes out, there's about five different stages. And they have to do either titration tests, checking for free fatty acids, or checking for soaps, which anytime you take oil and caustic, that's the formula to make soaps. When you talk about people that make their natural soaps, and we do sell some oil to people that that's their job is they make soaps you know that you buy at farmers markets and things like that and so each one of these is they're they're doing this test as chris said they're logging it they're given the numbers here they pass them on to him he looks at it most of the time they're doing this like every two hours uh -huh. and that gives them an idea of of where we are if we're in the parameter at this stage because each stage has to be in a parameter so that when you get to the end 
you're where you're supposed to be. It's a range. It's almost like getting yeah. your blood work done. Yeah. The doctor's yeah. checking your ranges and yeah. you get, get your blood work done. You try and get it back into the ranges you want to be. So you clearly have a standard that you follow. Right. This lab actually checks those standards and then hands it off to where the automation is and, mm -hmm. and there you go from there. Sometimes they're doing a test, you know, every two hours and sometimes they're doing a test every five minutes because they've got to find that, get it in that range. The machine beside Jana here is a near infrared machine, which is a really cool machine. Um, and what we can do with that is we can take um, the oil, they put it a little ampule right here, and they'll push the button. They'll do a free fatty acid profile scan on it. Um, also, the and we just passed it when we were coming out, there was somebody coming from the mill that had brought a sample of the meal over, the coming off the final press, because we also want to check and see how much fat's mm -hmm. in that meal so that we're, make, we're getting the optimum amount of fat out. Well, they grind it up in that coffee grinder, if you wondered why we had a big coffee grinder in our lab. They grind it, they put it in this, they set it on here, they, they run, shoots a beam of light through there and gives us fat fiber protein in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Some type of refractometer? Is yeah, it, it it's an it's a, it's a NIR, okay. near infrared. And what it'll do, it'll do something in, you know, normally we'd have to take a sample, send it off to Midwest Labs, and a week later you found out how you did. Yep. So it's a little hard to chase your tail a week later. Rick, yeah. can I ask, do, do, is, are, is this so scientific that you know where each crop came from when you're testing the oil? That's when it first comes in, right? When it first comes in, we can... You know, when you have a 158,000 bushel bin, mm -hmm. we can't segregate as much sure. as we might like <laughs> That's to. That's right. But we're getting more and more like that, especially where we could. Let's say you have, let's say you have a, a customer and they want uh, a certain volume, just like we did the almond oil run mm -hmm. here the other day. The oil came in and we ran it. Well, we could do the same thing. Let's say there's 10 semi loads of seeds that we bring in, we put in a bin. We do this for some, a couple of customers. We run those seeds separately over there. We clean our system out. We run our seeds. We take that oil. We bring it over here. Individually runs through there. And when it's done, it's their oil. And we know what our, what our yield was over there. We know what our refining losses were here. And it really helps when we can do those packages like that because then we can understand you know, if we've got an issue or something, because when we're just running, mm -hmm. kind of hard to see what your shrink in when you're dealing with three or four million Absolutely. pounds. Well, and I'm de deeper curious is, would you ever be able to tell a farm that they have an issue with their soil or because your test, like would it, would it ever be that uh, your test would be so far out of spec and you'd, you'd track that back to the crop or would well, that not be we the can case? do that. We, yeah, we can do that because we take a sample from each truck we send it in to right? Kansas Grain Inspection, oh, okay. and they grade it. They'll tell us the oleic uh, acid level. They'll uh -huh. tell us the protein. They'll tell us, and we'll see if we've got an issue with a farm or an, yeah. or, a, or a fertilizer issue. It's going to show up yep. there. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's so. neat. I'm, it's exciting to hear that our technology has grown to that level where you're being able to really tell tell the farmer, hey, you've got a problem, and really protect consumers well, and you've in the way so that you do with your farmers for so long well and that's that's where we see and our customers see one of the big advantages is we know we can take them to the field mm -hmm. and and yeah. and talk to the farmer that raised the seed that produced their oil or raised the seed that produced their feed completely and there's hardly any other company that can do that on the scale that we do it it's so cool it's exciting Jonna, come over here. Let's finish this all up <laughs> together. Um, this is the faces of agriculture. This is Lamar, Colorado, and this is Colorado Mill Sunflower Products. And I thoroughly enjoy learning. I thoroughly enjoy taking the tours. Uh, this is an inside look of how it all happens, right? And That's you right. do such a good job of capturing this stuff and putting it on social media and stuff for you to learn. The information that's out there, give a couple websites again and give them a like on social media. What's the website? Our, our website is comills.com. Our blog, you can find at comillsblog.com. Facebook is Sun, Colorado Mill Sunflower Products. And our Instagram is CM Sunflowers. So cool. Um, we're going to head out from here. and We're going to go have some fun and meet some people, some new faces. And that's what's really Get some good food. Where are we going? 
Well, there's a bunch of food trailers down at the Welcome Center. We're so gonna check that out first. You're our the tour guide, if you don't mind. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> okay, great. And Rick, thanks for spending the afternoon with us. Sure. It's always a pleasure. Um, this is going to continue throughout the day, so stick around for some great new content. Check out their Instagram. Check out ours, The Modern Eater. But to uh, thank you again, Rick Robbins and everybody involved, we love coming down to Lamar and visiting you at Colorado Mills. It's great to have you. It's great to have a voice that gets back and thank shows you. people what we do. That's very cool. Thank you and all the farmers for what you guys are doing. Okay, we're kick the rock down the road. We'll see you on this March 20th. It's meet in day and uh, support ranches, farms, uh, crops, uh, uh, just agriculture, agriculture in general. Yeah. All right, we'll kick it down the road. We'll see you again. The Modern Eater Show.